All of these summits have energized the movement to unify the Korean Peninsula. It's a step-by-step -step process that'll take time. But what would a path toward unification based on the identity and destiny of the Korean Peninsula look like? The Global Peace Foundation argues that if the Korean nation restores its identity that is based upon Hongiginggan, roughly translated into English as to broadly benefit humanity and achieves unification, Korea will be a leading country in the 21st century. A very real example of world peace. Coming up next, Moon Hyun-jin, chairman of the Global Peace Foundation, talks to us about the path toward unification that he has in his mind and the preparations that are needed. The unification process should start by finding the Korean nation's identity that has been shaped by its unique historical tradition. The concept of Hongiginggan means to broadly benefit all people and devote to humanity. This is the founding idea of our nation. Those are the words of Moon Hyun Jin, chairman of the Global Peace Foundation. Moon majored in history at Columbia University and graduated from Harvard Business School with an MBA. He also has a master's degree in science of religion. Moon has been working on a citizen-led unification movement on the Korean Peninsula, bringing together 950 civic and social organizations. He aims to achieve peace and unification based upon the idea of Hongiginggan to broadly benefit humanity. We sat down with Moon to find out more about the type of unification he's thinking about. Could you explain about Korean Dream? The Korean Dream is really the idea of finding Korea's original identity. I believe that especially this is important at this time because we're here to celebrate the 100th centennial of the Samil movement, which really encapsulates the vision for a new ideal nation to be created on the Korean Peninsula that our forefathers gave their lives for. I think this is really where the Korean people sh should really ask themselves, what was the vision that allowed them to motivate and animate themselves in such a way to give their lives for a new nation. And this is really where I believe the Korean dream ideal is so significant at this time. The Korean dream that I look to, inspired by that Samil movement, is really rooted in the Hongiginggan ideal, the ideal of living for the benefit of all mankind. I believe that when we ask ourselves, where does our identity begin, this is where our identity begins, and that's what the Korean dream encapsulates. At the International Forum on One Korea, which was held in December 2018, you said that the U.S. should abandon its narrow bilateral approach to denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula and needs a comprehensive strategic framework with the ultimate goal of peaceful reunification. Then what should the South Korean government do? Do you mean that the Moon administration should announce a vision for a new United Nation in order to overcome this crisis? I think so. And I think the Moon administration is already moving in that direction. If we think about the, if we reflect back onto the inter-Korean summits recently held uh, by the Moon administration, they basically pronounced that the goal is eventually the uh, what's that unification of the Korean Peninsula. So I think that's already happening here in Korea. But as I mentioned in my book, The Korean Dream, I think I'm going to put a p plug in for my book. <laughs> it's The Korean Dream Vision for a United Korea. I make it very clear that eventually in the future, the issue of unification will face the Korean Peninsula. But the question is not unification itself. But the question is, what type of unified nation will come about from unification? And I think this is something that the Korean people need to be seriously thinking about because the process for unification has already begun. I believe that the U.S. in their kind of blinder, narrow uh, per focus on denuclearization is losing sight of the larger picture of unification and that they need to take one step back, reassess their policy towards Korea, and recognize that unification is already on the table. 
that unification is already, the process has begun. And so they need to recalibrate. And I believe that if you look at the successes of U U.S. policy, there's a lot of success, well, not that many successes, but there's some successes that have changed the world in which we live today. And those two successes comes from the end of World War II, where the U.S., when uh, Europe was completely destroyed, developed a Marshall Plan in, in, in Europe, which was a huge investment for the American people. But it led to the peace in Europe and MacArthur's reconstruction of Japan, which was once again another huge investment, but which led to uh, the creation of, uh, of the current Japanese uh, nation today that is a major contributor, not only to the global economy, but to the security in the world. This is the approach that the U.S. should take in terms of Korea. So if, we, if Korea is able to develop a unified nation, within that context, you know, we can deal with the nuclear issues. If the two Koreas try to create a new united nation where freedom and human rights are respected based on their history and culture, do you think the international community will support this effort? Absolutely. The international community will, will support it. And this, this is something that I think Koreans need to really th think about. Most of the free world that recognizes freedom and human rights as a fundamental right will applaud what this, nation, what this new nation will be. Now you think about all the, the wealthiest, most developed nations in the world. They are these free nations. You think about what they will do in terms of engagement with this new nation. Do you think they would want to invest in this new nation? Maybe? <laughs> I can just tell you right now, living in America, that if there was to be a new unified nation, that upholds the values and the ideals that America cherishes and champions around the world, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to see a lot of the top investment banks and the corporations wanting to invest here because they know that their investments are protected and that uh, what they, they cherish in terms of values will be something that will be championed in the most dynamic region in Asia. So Korea will be like a magnet a magnet for huge foreign investment. I think this is something that people should, should, should really think about. One of the reasons why, let's say, North Korea, under the current regime, has really been a, like a cancer on this Korean peninsula is because of the tremendous human rights violations. What happens if a un new unified nation really championed the ideals of freedom? really champion the ideals of fundamental human rights. This will be a magnet not only for economic direct foreign investment, it will be a magnet in Asia for people who seek freedom and who, who seek uh, what's that? a nation that recognizes fundamental human rights. If you think about American history, the reason why America attracted all the best people from the world was because of those ideas. It was because of freedom. It was because of human rights. What will happen in, in this most dynamic region in the world today, Northeast Asia, if there's a nation that represents those ideals, that is an ancient civilization that has a history that goes 5,000 years back, that experienced the tragedies of colonialism, that experienced the travesty of the Cold War. There are so many people around the world that's going to relate with Korea and would want to come here. I'm talking about the smartest, the brightest, the richest. They would all want to come here. So Korea will benefit on so many different levels. And that's one of the reasons why I want the Korean people to dream. We should not be accepting the current state of things. We deserve more. We should dream. And we should think about the possibility of the kind of nation that we can build. Now, to go back, that is why I emphasize the importance of Hongi Gan. Hongi Gan is, is, is amazing. It's amazing. There is no ancient civilization in human history. There is, once again, I'm going to say it once again, there is no civilization 
ancient civilization in the entire history of humanity whose founding ideas was as lofty as the Korean people. Hong Yi Gan has the DNA for what the modern world takes for granted today, such as freedom and human rights. That is the Korean people's legacy. And that is the kind of nation the Korean people deserve. So I want the Korean people to understand their identity and to dream together of a new possibility of creating an ideal nation that can be a model for the world, then everything else follows.